Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to C++ Multi-Threading. We are, you know, in the end game for our thread pool task queue system here that we've been exploring. Uh, I got a couple of more quick, easy videos. Going to be interesting stuff here, a little light work before we wrap it up and move on to boost.asio. So in the last video, what we were exploring is the idea of this mixed workload where you've got asynchronous tasks and you've got compute heavy tasks, you know, mixed up together. And the way that we solved it was by, you know, splitting them up into their own thread pools and having tasks break off any compute work into a subtask that goes on that pool there. Now, in order to implement that, we needed a way for these tasks to submit subtasks. So they have to be able to get access to what I call the exec, which is just something that lumps together an async pool and a compute pool together. Uh, so I did it with singletons, and that's fine, but that means that everything is now tied to the one singleton. You don't have any flexibility to create, you know, separate execs for separate situations. So it's not the best. How can we make it so that it's not a singleton? Well, one basic way to do it is just to arrange our system so that every task that you pass into async well, it has to take in a reference to the exec, and then the system is going to inject that for all the tasks. And that's fine, like that works, but it's a little annoying to put that burden of the developer, like the, the person submitting the tasks, to have this specific you know, signature, or at least to have this part of the signature. Um, so yeah, that would work, but I got something better, and it's gonna give me an opportunity to introduce you guys a concept in C++ that I haven't uh, introduced yet. A new keyword for multi-threading. I'm pretty sure I haven't touched this yet. So let's get started by uh, forward declaring struct exec. And we're gonna make a little function. We're gonna call it this exec. Now the idea is you can call this function from within any task and it will give you the exec that is running that task. Sounds, sounds pretty cool, right? And the way we do it is a little magic word here, thread local. So this is something that was added, I believe, in C++11. And uh, we can declare a p exec, we'll make underscore just to differentiate it, equal to the one that we pass in. Now, the way this works is actually, it's very similar to this, the static exec. The only difference is when you make it thread local, now you get a one static instance per thread. Every thread gets its own separate one. And that's amazing because that gives us a little place to squirrel away the pointer to the executor that is running the current task on the worker thread. So what we got to do is we got to squirrel it away at the beginning. So first off, let's, gonna, let's just return. All right, now when we create a thread pool, we're going to optionally take in a pointer to the exec that is composing that thread pool, what it belongs to. And it, then we forward that to the worker. So that means we got to take it in here. Now it looks something like this. And we want to pass that again on to the actual worker thread that is doing the work for this worker, because that's the place where we've got to set this, the, uh, the thread local variable. So we pass that in here as the first thing. It's going to get bound in with bind front. And all we're going to do is call this exec and pass in the pointer that we have been given. Now, every worker thread is going to have this information squirreled away in its own thread local static variable. And now from within our task, we can call this exec, get the executor, and you know do some stuff with it. So because of that, we can make our system a little simpler now. Of course, this does not need to be a singleton anymore. And let's just make it like I kind of hinted before with the forward declaration. Let's make that a struct. And we'll just have it be a simple struct that includes these two thread pools. And we're not going to have all these functions. We're just going to have a constructor. Constructor is going to construct these two pools, passing in the pointer to this exec. Uh, we're going to make the names a little shorter. No underscore, because they're not private anymore. And now what we do is let's make these functions async and compute. Let's just make them free functions because that's going to make things easier because then you don't have to call, you know, this exec dot whatever. You just call async and it will call this exec for you. 
suppose I should put this exec stuff into the namespace because it was complaining there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And then we'll make our async free function. It's just going to call this exec dot async dot dispatch. Ah, uh, yeah, I would like to rename a function from run to dispatch. Why? Because run sounds like you're actually executing the task, but that's not what's happening. You're just putting it in a queue and then a worker will pull it off and execute it later. So I like dispatch better. But anyways, we had our async function and we'll make one for compute as well. And now we create our actual instance of the exec locally here, because we're not going to be using singleton, obviously. And we'll just do this. And then when you submit a root level task, you're going to just go, you know, something like exec.async.dispatch. So you dispatch the task. And then within the task, when you want to dispatch, you know, a subtask to the same exec, you're going to use our function. So you're just going to use, you know, tk compute. And now no matter what exec this task gets dispatched to, the subtask will always get dispatched to the same exec. And if we build it, we get build errors, because of course, of course you get build errors. So when we create the thread pool, we're constructing all the workers. We need to pass in, we need to forward this basically to each worker. There you go. And if we run it, hopefully it don't take too long. Yep. All right. Seems to be working fine. So there you go. Look, Ma, no singleton. Because, you know, it's, it's a lot better if, if you can. Not using singleton is better than using singleton. But that's it. It's a little little improvement here. And mostly I just wanted an excuse to, to show off thread local. It's got a lot more uses than what I've shown here. It's a very useful construct. And it's not that difficult to understand or use. Now in the next video, we're going to look at something a little more uh, theoretical. Um, basically, if you tried to take this async task and instead of running it directly, if you tried to dispatch it to the async queue as a subtask, in most cases, that would just deadlock your program. And it's, I don't think it's immediately obvious why that would be the case. But uh, once you think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a problem. And the solution to it is uh, it's interesting. So we're definitely going to take a look at that. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more C++ multi-threading.